Welcome to another installment of Assistive Technology ATX. Today we're going to talk about how to adapt an iPad game for Switch use. There are a few iPad games out there that are designed for Switch use, meaning that you can plug in your Switch using some kind of an adapter, open the game, and start playing immediately. But the vast majority of apps and games for iPad aren't designed for Switch use. So today we're going to talk about how we can adapt uh, using iOS technology those games uh, for Switch use and we're going to talk about one specific app called Rocket Flight and this is just a game where you can make a rocket go up and as you're making it go up with uh, the Switch you're just trying to avoid objects that get in its way. Uh, I use this when working on a core word such as up uh, with students and they love it. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is make sure our switch is configured and uh, connected to the iPad. If you need help with this, there are two different videos that work on this in this channel. One using the AbleNet Blue 2, the other using the Hook Plus. Today we're using the Blue 2. Uh, I have my Blue 2 switch turned on and it looks like the batteries are fully charged and it's ready to go. So just to confirm that it's connected, we'll go to settings and go to Bluetooth. We see that Bluetooth is on and Bluetooth is connected. Then we'll go to general and then accessibility, switch control, and then you can find switches and see here that we have Blue 1 connected, Blue 2 connected, and hook 1 through 4. You also see on the right side the actions associated with each of the switches. Uh, those are not going to be used for our purposes today because we're going to create our custom gestures that allow us to interact with the game. So let's go ahead and look at the game. Uh, you can find it in the App Store uh, by searching for Rocket Flight. Uh, if you can't see the keyboard, if it doesn't pop up, and you're using the Bluetooth, that's because the Bluetooth mimics a USB or um, a wireless keyboard. So all you have to do is turn off your Bluetooth and then the keypad will uh, pop up so that you can type in these things. Um, and so you see on the top left, Rocket Flight Control, fun new game. I think you can download it for free, but then to remove the ads, it costs 99 cents. Um, I think it's worth it. It's pretty inexpensive, and it's a fun little game that works really well with a lot of students. So if we go to it, we can see that there's this neat little intro page. Um, I've turned off the volume and the music, but the music is really good. It's kind of a techno-y type thing. Uh, so to start out with, um, an adult will have to press the launch button, this big old button down here. And then to play it, all you're doing, turn on the volume real quick. To play it, all you're doing is pressing anywhere on the screen. So it allows the rocket to go up and then you'll see there are objects in the way and then you try to avoid them and sometimes you can't. Then once you get game over, there's this red button in the middle that allows you to restart the game. So we have to think about in terms of how many switches we need to install. We only really need one. Right here in the middle where we have the restarting of the game and then we can just press on the same spot uh, with our finger to move the rocket up. Ooh, got past the first level. Um, so we only really need one switch and the switch will basically act like a finger press right on this red button since it acts both as the replay thing and the thing that allows you to make the rocket go up. So let's see how that works. Okay, so from another angle, just to see what the game looks like, again, we only have to press one spot to start the game over and then we can press that spot or any spot. Uh, to continue playing the game. I got past that one, that's good. Um, so what we're gonna do is basically pick one spot to use and to make sure we know which spot it is, we're gonna use a post-it note 
and place it right underneath the spot where we're gonna press. And that's an important part of what we're doing um, in general when adapting these games is figuring out where on the screen we need to press in these post-it notes. So now that we have our post-it notes set up, we can go ahead and create the recipe. So again, it's under settings and under switch control. And right here you can see it says recipes. So we're gonna create a new recipe and then we'll go ahead and name it something like rocket. And then we'll assign a switch. And here's where having those switches installed, again, if you need to learn how to do this, there's another video on this channel. And we'll just go ahead and pick blue one. Then we'll do custom gesture. And here's where that post-it note comes in handy. So right where that arrow is pointing, right above that, go ahead and press that area and stop. And you can press play just to make sure it was pressed correctly. It looks a little below us. Let's try this again. Okay, record. Stop, see, play. Okay, that looks good. And you might have to mess around with it, but you'll see when you press play, that blue dot, just like where your finger would be, right above the arrow on the post-it note. So just to look at this from another view, uh, right on the recipe page, I'm gonna go to custom gesture, and you can see right where the post-it note is, we'll go ahead and press there, and stop, and press play a few times just to make sure it's in the right area. You might have to mess around with it to make sure it's hitting in the right area, uh, but it should be good to go there. And one thing I wanted to point out is that in some cases having a post-it note that's really sticky if you put the entire thing down uh, it might mess with the uh, interface so you just want to make sure that only a little part is sticking so you get that right area but that seems like it should be good to go so we can go ahead and test it out all right so you have your new recipe set up and what we want to do is make sure when we turn on switch control that it the recipe you made is the one that launches. So over under here where it says launch recipe, we'll select that and select rocket and then go back. And now when we turn on switch control at the very top here, this is the on and off button, um, it's gonna come up with our, uh, our, our recipe. It's gonna be the one that's active currently. So we can kind of see what this looks like. If I press uh, switch one, you can kind of see faintly where it will uh, press in the middle of the screen. And hopefully if we did everything right, uh, that should allow us to replay our game and then continue to play it. So right now I'm not touching the screen at all, I'm just touching my switch. We're able to start the game. And we're able to launch the rocket. And again, this is just using the switch. And there you go. So what we've done is we've taken a game that was not designed for use with an app, or excuse me, with a Switch, and we have created a, a way for us to interact with it with a Switch using the iOS tools. Now, this is a very simple example where you have only one Switch needed to play the game. However, as you can guess on different games and different apps, the complexity of it can grow exponentially, uh, including uh, using up to six switches on some, some cases to interact with the game. Uh, but the power of this is, is really great. You've gone from only a limited number of games that students who, uses switches, students who use switches can interact with to basically all of them. Uh, the interaction might be limited or stilted in some way, but it's there. So, you know, if they're having, if they're wanting to play like Pokemon Go or any of these things, it's possible for them to be actually be interacting with it. So uh, watch this space, subscribe to this channel, and I'll be putting out more videos like this uh, that show different ways that you can uh, modify these games for Switch Access. Thanks for watching.